Hey guys, Pablo with BND, and today at Top Reddit Post, we're gonna be taking a look on the craziest, scariest, let's not meet stories on Reddit. And if you haven't subscribed yet, don't forget to do so. Hit that notifications button and leave us a thumbs up and a comment in the end of this video. Hollow the Moor, long time lurker, first time poster. My great grandmother was born in 1913 in Ukraine. In 1932, when she was 19, something called Holdomor took place, extermination by hunger. This was recognized years later as genocide on Ukrainian people by the Soviet Union. Millions died, as, as you might expect, during a famine, cannibalism became rampant. It wasn't unheard of, Grandma told me, for families to kill the youngest child in order to eat. As time passed and the famine ended, things seemed to get better, but food was still scarce. It cost a lot just for the basics, milk, eggs, bread, etc. It also took a lot of time as those things weren't easy to find. Though it happens less, Great Grandma was certain that people were resorting to easier, more sinister methods to obtain food. Great Grandma was pregnant with my grandfather in 1936, and she wanted fresh vegetables desperately. Sort of a pregnancy craving, I guess you would say. So out she went, trekking up and down the streets. It looks like she wasn't going to have any luck until... Lady, you need something? It was a small boy, about 8 years old. His chicks were unusually full, she remembered. Most people those days had cheekbones that looked like they would poke out from your face at any slight pressure. Great Grandma told the boy she wanted vegetables, and his chubby face spilled into a grin. He knew just the place, he told her and gave her directions to a hovel a few blocks down. She was wary, but determined, so off she went. The hovel smelled like slaughter. She didn't think anything of it. Maybe these people had a lot of food, and she had struck a gold mine. The harpsey would take sympathy on a pregnant woman and not charge her an astronomical price for a droopy carrot. When she pushed the curtain, acting as a door, a sighed and said hello. Three things happened simultaneously. There was a man with a plank of wood raised above his head coming towards her. She caught sight of a human head lying on the table, causing her to scream, and a woman in the corner shouted, STOP! The woman examined my grandmother, frowning at her stomach. The boy knows we have standards. We don't kill pregnant women. Go, leave. Do not repeat what you saw, we can change our minds. Great Grandma didn't need to be told that again. She left and came to America years later to start a cannibalist free life. I still wonder what would have happened had they not noticed she was pregnant. I'll be honest guys, I know exactly what would have happened. Fat bellies to everyone. A bed for the night. When I was about 12, my great uncle John came from Ukraine to visit us in Canada. He had a lot of stories, but this was the one that stood out. In the late 60s, John was traveling by train from his village to another to visit family. He had to change trains at one point, and he was dropped off at what amounted to a platform in a hut in the middle of nowhere. There was no one else at the station. And other than a dirt road that led off into surrounding woods, there was nothing there. He waited for some time, but no train came. It was winter and getting cold and darker. And just about the time he started worrying about a place to stay and some food to eat, an old woman appeared out of the twilight. She asked if he was waiting for such and such a train. And when he said who was, she said it wouldn't be long until the following day. She asked if he needed a bed for the night, and offered him a meal and room at her house, which she said was about an hour's walk from the station. Lodging with locals was more or less the standard when traveling this part of the USSR, and Great Uncle John wasn't looking forward to a hungry night on a cold platform, so he was glad to accept her offer. He took his suitcase and they set off together down the dark road into the forest. It was more than an hour away, more like two, and by the time they arrived at the woman's small two-story house, John was tired and hungry. They went inside and the woman lit some oil lamps and warmed some borscht for them. It was the first time John was able to see the woman clearly, 
and he was a bit startled to realize that the old woman was actually a man. Not wanting to pry and too tired to care, John finished his soup and asked where he would be sleeping. She led him to the upstairs to a tiny room with a window that contained a single bed and nothing else. He thanked her, they said goodnight, and she closed the door. Then she locked it, leaving him in the dark. Somewhat creeped out by this, John called to her, but she didn't answer and he heard nothing else. Figuring he would deal with it in the morning, and that she had probably done it by mistake, John set his suitcase down and laid on the bed, deciding to make the best of it and get some sleep. Before he could fall asleep though, he felt the urge to pee and got out of bed, hoping to find a chamber pot or something he could pee in. He got onto his hands and knees and began to feel under the bed in the darkness, thinking that's where the pot would be if there was one. Instead, he found the body. Uh, nope, Great Uncle John said, and went right to the window to see if he could exit the room that way. It was nailed shut. He knew that if he remained in the room, he was probably a dead man. But if he broke the window and tried to get out that way, there was a good chance that the old woman, and who knows who else was there, would hear him and come into the room before he could get away. So he did the only thing he could do. He pulled the body from under the bed, heaving it into the mattress and covered it with the blanket. Then he got under the bed and waited. Sure enough, about an hour later, he heard footsteps come slowly the stairs and then towards the room. The lock clicked and the knob turned slowly. In the gloom, John saw someone move towards the bed. Then he heard several terrific and sickening thuds. The person had bashed the body on the bed with a large crowbar, which they then dropped onto the floor right in front of John. There was silence, then the person went out of the room and the door was shut again. The footsteps went down the stairs and then there was silence again. John moved out from under the bed, took the crowbar and was able to slowly pry the window open. He didn't say, but I imagine he was scared the entire time. When the window was up, he threw his suitcase out, then dove through himself, not caring what was below him, only worried about what was behind. He landed without too much injury and began to run into a field behind the house towards some lights in the far distance. It turned out to be a highway with some military and transport trucks on it and John was able to get a ride to another village where he could catch a train. He didn't bother reporting what had happened to the authorities, since at that time in the USSR there was a distinct chance he would have been the one who got into trouble. He just thanked God he escaped and decided that the next time he traveled to visit relatives he would take another way. I'll tell you guys, that's really, really scary. And that's another story from the Ukraine. I'm actually wonder if those people are also cannibals, instead of just wanting to steal from him. One decision. When I was at nature, I was goth. Black hair, black clothes, black makeup, even had a pair of combat boots. My friends and I, in a typical goth fashion, hung out at the local cemetery. We started going as a joke, but soon discovered we liked the peace we found there. That all changed at one night. My friend called to see if I wanted to hang out, and I did. None of our friends were available. They were either working or recovering from partying the night before, so we're all now our own. My friend picked me up and drove up to the cemetery. We were hanging out, smoking cigs and BSing about the latest issue she was having with her boyfriend. When we noticed, at the top of the hill we were on, about a hundred feet away, a bonfire had been lit. You have to understand that this cemetery is about a block off campus of a major university and it's not uncommon for college students to go there to party. My friend and I sighed, knowing that we would have to get going soon. It was illegal to be in the cemetery after dark and we knew the police would show up because some jerks had decided they needed a bonfire. We decided to finish our cigs and then take off. Just then, the most horrible stench came waving down the hill from the direction of the bonfire. My friend gagged and covered her mouth. I groaned and said, what the hell? My friend shook her head, saying, I don't know what they are doing, let's just leave. We get in the car and one of us suggested, I honestly do not remember who. Maybe we should just go up there and see what they are doing? My stomach turned and a cold shiver went through my body. My friend must have had the same feeling because 
At the same time, we both said, no, we should leave. My friend turned the car on, switched her headlights, put the car in reverse and looked over her shoulder before starting to back up. I was still looking up the hill. A figure stepped in front of the bonfire. I could only see a silhouette, but I was sure whoever it was, was watching us. A feeling of terror hit me and I said, go, 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 getting louder and more panicked with each word. My friend looked back up the hill for a second, as just as the figure took a step towards us, she slammed on the gas and peeled out, going in reverse down the hill. She rammed the gear shift into drive and we were out. We didn't say anything for a while until she said, what the hell are they burning? I shook my head, I don't know. She dropped me off at home and I went to bed. The next morning I woke up and went to the kitchen. My mom was there drinking her morning coffee and I joined her. We talked about her job for a bit when she suddenly comes out with, did you hear what happened last night? I shrugged and said no, I had just gotten up. She tells me that a woman she worked with was kidnapped from the parking garage. Oh my god, I say, did they find her? Yes, but too late, she replies. Whoever took her had raped and murdered her. They found her this morning in the cemetery. He tried to dispose of her body in a bonfire. I froze. My brain was going a mile a minute. The realization slowly creeping up. Death was what that smell was. Needless to say, I never hung out at a cemetery at night again. I think back at our decision to leave instead of investigating the fire. That one decision could have changed everything. Dark silhouettes and the bonfire? Let's not meet. Hey guys, I'll tell you this, cemeteries are dangerous. And not because some kids just hang out in there, but because other crazy people hang out in there as well. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please leave me a thumbs up and a comment. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll be seeing you guys tomorrow for another top Reddit post and Reddit singles. I hope you guys have a good night.